If you're planning to learn how to code, stop. Watch this video first because it could save you years of wasted effort. Here's my opinion. You should not learn how to code anymore. That skill will not be needed in a few years. But before you say, oh, another person saying software engineers will be replaced. No, let's first clear up a huge misconception. There's a huge difference between coding and software engineering. Coding is just transforming instructions into a different language. It's writing lines of syntax, debugging semicolons, memorizing language quirks. It's what boot camps and to an extent universities teach and it's what everyone thinks that they need to learn. Software engineering is completely different. It's designing systems, solving real problems, making tough decisions. And here's the counterintuitive part. While coding is dying, software engineering is exploding. We're going to have 10x more software in the future. Every business will need it. Every product will have it. So software engineering is not going anywhere. It's actually going to get bigger and more important than ever. But learning it in the way that people used to do it is not going to get you very far. AI already writes better code than most developers today, and it will just get get exponentially better. If you're learning how to code manually today, you're like someone learning how to make complex math calculations in their head when everyone else is just using calculators. So instead, I'm going to show you three specific software engineering skills that will make you irreplaceable in the AI age. Skills that will compound over time and that AI can't replicate. And the best part is you can start developing these today as a total beginner. If you're new here, my name is Moritz. I have 10 plus years experience in tech and a product management background. Two years ago, I quit my job to build my own software startups and I have since launched two SaaS, which have made over 100K in revenue. And I've built a community to teach beginners how to build software in the new age of software engineering. The first skill is tool mastery. There are so many AI tools nowadays with new ones coming out every day. The key is to know which tools give you maximum leverage. Here's a fact. A junior programmer using Claude code effectively can now outperform a mediocre programmer writing code manually. That's not an exaggeration. It's happening right now in companies around the world. The winners of the next decade won't be the best coders. They'll be the people who know exactly which AI tools to use, when to use it, and how to use it effectively. They'll be the ones who can 10x their productivity while everyone else is still arguing about whether AI will replace programmers. So let me break down what tool mastery actually means. First is understanding tool capabilities and its limitations. Every AI tool has strengths and weaknesses. Claude Code is currently the best for building full applications. GPT-5 is great at code base understanding. Lovable and Copy Coder are perfect for UI prototypes, but not good for backend logic. Knowing which tool to use is like a carpenter knowing when to use a hammer versus a screwdriver. Number two is prompt engineering. The difference between an amateur and a professional AI user comes down to prompting, but not actually what prompting tricks you use, like I will tip you $100, but just what specific instructions and context you give the AI. For example, an amateur might say, build me a login page. A professional says, build a login page with email and password fields, client side validation, rate limiting to prevent brute force attacks and redirect to dashboard on success or show inline errors on failure. So they understand how to provide context, how to specify constraints and how to iterate effectively. This isn't about tricks or hacks. It's about clear communication and understanding how these models think. Number three is workflow optimization. It's not enough to know individual tools. You need to chain them together into workflows. For example, if you're building an AI video generation tool, you might use specific LoRa's to generate base images, then use Nano Banana to modify the images and finally cling to animate them into videos. For coding, you might use Claude to architect your system, V0 to design your UI, and Cursor to refine the implementation. The key is knowing which tool and API to use and how to combine them to get the best result. And number four is staying ahead of the curve, basically. New AI tools launch every week. Most are noise, but some are game changing. You need to develop a good sense for which tools matter. Follow the right people on Twitter, join the right Discord servers, and test new tools quickly and ruthlessly. Your tool stack should evolve monthly, not yearly. I spend at least an hour every day testing new AI tools, not because I love shiny new objects, but because each 10% improvement in my tools means 10% more leverage. Compound that over a year and you're operating at a completely different level than someone using last year's tools. The second skill you need to master is system design. Developing a deep understanding of how digital systems work together and making intelligent architectural decisions. At its core, system design is about logical thinking. It's knowing where to store your app's context, when to make API calls, how to structure your data. These seem like simple decisions, but they determine whether people will use your app. Think about it this way. AI can write perfect code, but it can tell you if your social media app should load all posts at once or fetch them as users scroll. It doesn't know if your e-commerce site should process payments immediately or queue them for batch processing. It can't decide if user profiles should be stored in one big table or split across multiple services. So here are three things you actually need to understand. One is understanding the basics of how apps work. Apps are basically just a flow of data. Let's start simple. When you use Instagram and like a photo, here's what actually happens. The heart turns red 
instantly on your screen, which is an optimistic update. While in the background, it sends a message to Instagram servers saying user X liked photo Y. The server saves this in a database and then confirms it worked. If it fails, the heart turns back to white. That's an example of a system design decision. Should you wait for the server, which is slow but accurate, or update immediately, which is fast but might fail? Instagram in this case chose speed and other apps like banking apps might choose accuracy. So these decisions matter. Number two is learning where different parts of your app should live. Take a document editor like Google Docs. Should you save every keystroke immediately to the server, which is safe but uses a lot of bandwidth? Or should you store changes locally and sync every few seconds, which is faster, but you might lose work if your laptop crashes? Google in this case chose a hybrid. Keystrokes save locally for speed, but sync to servers every few seconds. Notion does the same, but shows you exactly when it's syncing. These aren't just technical choices. They affect whether users trust your app with important work. AI can't really make this decision because it requires understanding your specific users and business goals. And three is making smart trade-offs. Here's a real example from CopyCoder. We had to decide how exactly to generate app and website designs. Should we generate them in React, which is easier to export and kind of the standard for web development? Or should we generate them in plain HTML, which is a much faster generation and also simpler to engineer? We eventually chose HTML because speed mattered more and users want designs fast. And that's how we stand out from the competitors. So the trade-off we accepted there is that exporting and turning it into a real React app is harder and might not match the design exactly, but we prioritize the core user experience on our platform. This is an example of something that's not a coding decision, but they're more strategic decisions that determine your product success. And sure, AI at the end of the day will get better at this as well. But as AI improves and more software gets built, system complexity will grow too. It's actually a never ending race. That's the way I see it. And humans always need to stay ahead by understanding the underlying principles to be effective in steering the AI. So in my opinion, system design decisions are becoming more important, not less. And while you can learn from books and courses, the best teacher is experience, building lots of different systems and learning from what works and what doesn't. And finally, the third and most important skill is product taste. This is what separates successful products from failed experiments. And it's the one thing that AI will probably never be able to do as good as humans, because I think it's a fundamental human thing. We are building products for humans mostly, and it's hard to get AI to do well at this because it's very hard to define what good is. It's kind of like trying to get the AI to be good at being funny and writing jokes. It's just not easy. AI can execute any product idea perfectly. It can build beautiful interfaces, write flawless code and deploy scalable infrastructure, but it can't tell you what people actually want. It can't feel the frustration of a clunky user experience and it can't sense the delight of a perfectly timed interaction. And that's where product taste comes in. Product taste is definitely a talent some people are born with, but it's also a skill you can develop through practice. Here's how. Number one is to just use everything. Download every new app that gets traction. Sign up for every SaaS tool in your space. Use competing products daily. Most people talk about products they've never actually used. Don't be most people. Have opinions based on experience, not screenshots. Number two is to just analyze what works and what doesn't. When you love a product experience, figure out why and really ask yourself that. When something frustrates you, identify the specific problem. Is it the onboarding flow, the navigation structure, the visual hierarchy? Build a mental library of patterns that work and patterns that don't. Three is understanding the psychology behind design. Great products aren't just functional, they're emotional. They make users feel competent, powerful, and connected. Study behavioral psychology, understand concepts like cognitive load, decision fatigue, and dopamine loops. Read books like Hooked and Don't Make Me Think. Number four is to just ship constantly and iterate based on feedback. Product taste isn't developed in isolation, it's refined through contact with reality. So ship small products, get feedback, understand why some features are loved and others ignored. Each iteration sharpens your taste. And five is to study the masters. Look at products from companies like Linear, Spotify, and Notion. These aren't accidents. They're the result of obsessive attention to detail. Study their onboarding flows, analyze information architecture, understand their design systems, and just learn from the best. The market is flooded with technically perfect products that nobody wants to use. They're built by people with great coding skills, but no product taste. Don't be one of them. In a world where anyone can build anything, the winners will be those who know what's worth building. So here's what this means for you practically. If you're starting out, don't spend years learning to code. Spend weeks learning to use AI tools, months understanding system design, and years developing product taste. If you're already a developer, don't panic. Your deep understanding of how code works actually gives you an advantage in directing AI, but shift your focus from writing code to architecting systems and designing products. If you're non-technical, I truly believe this is your moment. The barriers that kept you from building software are crumbling, and you can now compete with technical founders if you master 
master these skills. I think the future really belongs to builders like this. These builders will never write a single line of code manually. And that's perfectly fine because in the end, nobody cares how your code was written. They care if your product solves their problem. They care if it's delightful to use and they care if it makes their life better. So the age of the programmer is ending and the age of the AI powered builder is beginning. And these are also exactly the skills I'm trying to learn and the journey that I'm on. I try to put everything into practice in the software businesses that I'm building. I also share everything I learn in my school community, which I'm going to link below. If you found this helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more videos on building with AI. See you in the next one.